Storytime friends. Welcome to Storytime at Home. I'm Miss Amanda from the Stowe Monroe Falls Public Library. We have a book today called Here We Go Digging for Dinosaur Bones. Have you ever wanted to do that? It sounds like a pretty cool job. Hmm, I wonder what it's like. This book is by Susan Lendroth and the pictures are by Bob Kohler. And there we see a bunch of people digging here. They've got all sorts of tools with them. And there is the dinosaur bones. Oh look, even more dinosaur bones. We've got an Apatosaurus, and a Triceratops, and a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and a Parasolophilus, all sorts of dinosaurs. Here we go digging for dinosaur bones. And this is sung to the tune of a song you might know called Here We Go Around the Mulberry Bush. I thought you'd know it. All right, here we go. We're driving over, get ready to drive. Here we go digging for dinosaur bones, dinosaur bones, dinosaur bones. Here we go digging for dinosaur bones on a warm and sunny morning. So many people, there's a little bit of information down here, and it says many people from workers constructing a new building to children playing in a field have found dinosaur bones by accident. That's cool, but scientists travel all over the world to places that they think they might find the chance of finding fossils. Oh, they're going to hike now. So here we go, we're gonna hike. This is the way we hike the trail, hike the trail, hike the trail. This is the way we hike the trail on a warm and sunny morning. All right, the information here says that fossils are the remains of animals and plants that died long ago. Paleontologists are scientists who study fossils. They hunt for them in areas where rocks formed millions of years ago. That's pretty cool. Did you know about that big word, paleontologist? Now they're looking for them. They're scanning the ground. This is the way we scan the ground, scan the ground, scan the ground. This is the way we scan the ground on a warm and sunny morning. So they're looking around to see if they can find something. Oh, look, it looks like they found something right here. Sometimes when a dinosaur died, mud or sand quickly covered its body. Over time, the body decomposed, leaving behind just the skeleton. Minerals slowly replace the bones, creating fossils. Hmm. How interesting. And there's something sticking up out of the ground. What is it? That's its claw, that's right. Oh, now they're going to excavate, so they're gonna dig. This is the way we excavate, excavate, excavate. This is the way we excavate on a warm and sunny morning. Look at all these tools they're using. All sorts of stuff. When a paleontologist finds a dinosaur fossil, they dig around, all around it, to look for more pieces of the dinosaur. They also may find fossils of plants and other animals from the same time period. So they look all around that piece. This is the way we sift through dirt. We've got a screen and we're sifting it. Sift through dirt, sift through dirt. This is the way we sift through dirt on a warm and sunny morning. So they sift through those little pieces fall and the big pieces stay in there. Fossils can be as big as a refrigerator or as small as a grain of sand. To build a dinosaur skeleton, paleontologists want to find every scrap available, every little piece. They sift dirt through wire screens and they find the tiny, teeny bits. So there, it's, like, it's almost like a window screen in your window. Sometimes they're bigger or smaller depending on what they're looking for. Oh, what are they doing now? They're wrapping them up. 
This is the way we wrap our finds, wrap our finds, wrap our finds. This is the way we wrap our finds on a warm and sunny morning. Sometimes it's safer to leave the large fossil in the surrounding block of stone and to lift it out as one large piece. Paleontologists wrap the block in cloth, paper towels, or even toilet paper. <laughs> How funny. They then cover it with towels with a hard layer of plaster to protect it during transportation. So there it is, all wrapped up in toilet paper, and then they're putting the plaster on it to protect it. Oh, now they're cleaning it, and they have very small tools. So take your small tool. This is the way we clean the bones, clean the bones, clean the bones. This is the way we clean the bones on a warm and sunny morning. All sorts of interesting tools here. Back at the laboratory, scientists and technicians carefully clean each fossil. They use chemicals, chisels, brushes, and the picks your dentist uses to clean your teeth. How interesting! And now, what are they doing? They're using all sorts of other tools, a computer and a microscope, and they are studying the bones. So we're going to pretend we're using our microscope and look right through it. This is the way we study bones, study bones, study bones. This is the way we study bones on a warm and sunny morning. Dinosaurs lived millions of years ago, but we have a good idea of what they looked like from their fossils. Paleontologists study fossilized bones like a jigsaw puzzle to decide what goes where when building a dinosaur skeleton. Oh, and here they are. They're putting it all together now. Where might you see this? Hmm, I wonder. So now they're going to build it, and we're going to stack things up on top of each other when we build. This is the way we build the T-Rex, build the T-Rex, build the T-Rex. This is the way we build the T-Rex on a warm and sunny morning. Most fossil skeletons are not complete when they are found. Paleontologists figure out what the missing parts should be and make models of them. All the pieces, both the fossils and the reproductions, are fitted together on a metal frame to build a dinosaur skeleton. So there are all the pieces there. Let's see. Oh, and where are they here when they're looking at it? At a museum, right? This is the way it bears its teeth. Arr, bears its teeth, bears its teeth. This is the way it bears its teeth on a warm and sunny morning. T-Rex had more than 50 large teeth in its massive jaws, some up to a foot long. Wow, that's really big. Scientists think it may have had the most powerful bite of any land animal ever. And there it is. That's what we think it might have looked like. Here we are again, going digging. Let's go digging for dinosaur bones, dinosaur bones, dinosaur bones. Let's go digging for dinosaur bones on a warm and sunny morning. Fossils can be found in many places and anyone can hunt for them, even kids. What dinosaurs would you like to find? Hmm. I wonder. In the back of this book, there's all sorts of information about dinosaurs. What about you? Have you ever gone hunting for fossils? I have. When I was a kid, that was one of the things my family used to do together. And around here in Ohio, where the Stone Monroe Falls Public Library is located, we don't really find dinosaurs. We find lots of sea life. And so I brought a couple examples of fossils I found when I was a kid. This is a horn coral, part of a horn coral. You can't see it too well, I think. But you might be able to see some of the texture on it there and inside, and that's pretty cool. And then you can also see here, there's a little dark spot there. See that? That's something fossilized. 
and then a shell over here. And then I have this really cool shell called a brachiopod that's been piratized. See how it's a little bit shiny? So those are just some of the fossils I found. Make sure if you go digging for fossils that you get permission first. Sometimes you can just look for fossils in stream beds and rivers and you might find something. Good luck.